Hi guys, my name is Action from Action Studio and today we're going to learn some more projection mapping. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about a software called Chaser. What this software allows me to do is it lets me create sequences and edit them, change them and apply them on the fly. Very simply and easy, saving me a lot of time and hassle if I had to create them from scratch. So let's get started. I'm going to fire up my Resolume. Uh, in my Resolume, uh, I have a simple composition with two solid colors, just green and white. Uh, I need that. On the camera, as you can see, I have created this shape. Uh, the shape consists of circles, semicircles, polygons, triangles, mostly almost everything that you would come across in your real life scenario. And this serves as a benchmark for me trying to understand how easy or difficult a software is when I'm reviewing it or when I'm testing it. So, um, let me show you how it's mapped. We go to the advanced screen setup. This is the input selection. We're going to talk about it in a moment. This is the output uh, screen. So this is how it has been mapped. And it's using uh, a few masks, a few uh, simple slices and polygons and stuff. Um, and the input looks different completely than the output. And there's a reason for that. Now, mostly it is suggested that your input screen and your output screen should be same or similar uh, because then it is easy to manipulate and make animation for it and but but sometimes it's just not possible and the reason for that is that sometimes the size of the shape that you have to create on the output transformation screen is just too small that if you were to create the same size in the input the resolution would not be enough and to show you that in an example this uh, right here the bottom center this one look what happens when I make its size smaller look at the edges that it uh, creates on the actual projection output so you can see the edges and you can see the jagged edges that it creates because it doesn't have, it's not getting enough resolution going in that it can make a smooth output. So that's why it sometimes is not possible to do that. So the best you can do is you can rename your layers properly and remember what you have placed where. In our case, uh, I have named them uh, based on my understanding and how I use them. Um, I have saved this all in a preset called 2. Uh, that's something that I would or you would want to remember uh, if you are not using a default preset. Also, um, they look square here, but they are circles and semicircles. That's because I'm using internal masks. I'm going to make another video later on explaining masking in Resolume if I already haven't. Uh, I just want to retouch on that issue. But if you click under, I mean, if I click under this right now, you can see my mask is there. It's a circle mask, uh, and if I click on this, it gives me uh, a normal square slice. All right, let's start um, Chaser now. I'm going to save and close this. In my Chaser, this is how Chaser looks like. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Load Arena Setup. I'm going to pick up two because, as I mentioned, that's my preset. And there it is. This is my preset. Now, it looks different to you than what it was in the advanced screen setup and the reason for that is that chaser picks up the actual masks and not just the slice so if a slice contains a mask it's going to pick up that as the uh, shape but it doesn't for some reason ha show curves so it tries to just use edges to represent best it can of any shape that it's there so this is um, a sequence creator if you're familiar with one um, these are the number of steps there are in the sequence. I'm going to name the sequence and I'll show you why later. But just remember, I'm naming the sequence one. Uh, you can create or de decrease or increase steps over here. And let's see how this works. So while I'm on one, any uh, shape I simply click on will be active. I can click again to deactivate it. So it's quite simple, right? Um, let's first make a very simple uh, animation or, or something um, that I can show you guys. So I'm going to select this one on step one. Um, two, I'm going to select these two. Three, I'm going to select all three. Um, four, I'm going to then come back. Uh, wait. So yeah, 
and then six I'm gonna just have this seven is just this eight this nine this ten all three eleven none twelve this thirteen these two fourteen all again fifteen um, just these two and sixteen just this guy so all the steps are done uh, now that's all that's all you have to do to make a slice if you want to test how it looks you know you just press play and you can see I'm gonna pause it and that's it okay so now I'm gonna put this software aside I can minimize this and now when you ins when you download Chaser, it comes with a plugin that you can install in your Resolume, so it shows up in your effects. Um, for me, it's right here, Chaser. I'm going to put it on top, and you can see on uh, the output is it says demo because now the Chaser is loaded, it's ready to go. One of the things that I'm going to do is in the layers below section, I'm going to act. I'm going to select layer one, which is my white. Uh, background I'm gonna also activate this green solid layer so it separates um, the chaser okay so now in chaser what we do is we select the sequence and here it already has sequence one selected if I move this sequence you will notice it tells you what sequence you have activated based on the sequence you have here which is pretty good because now you can MIDI map this thing so that's a pretty cool feature okay so I have on sequence one and steps now these are the steps one two three four that we created uh, and you can have up to 16 so uh, I'm gonna put these steps on a timeline so it just runs and runs steps now nothing's happening here uh, but that plugin that I have loaded internally in Resolume is doing all the animations so that's pretty interesting right so now you can see the screen uh, it is now playing the animation that I created I'm gonna change the screen to something slightly darker uh, brightness yes yeah, red's fine so you can see yeah I've created the uh, the chaser and it's that's it it's as straightforward and as simple as that now I'm using a simple white uh, color but you can use any animation uh, that you would like to so I'm gonna quickly look for a video so here I have a video that I was able to find and if I click on it uh, you can see it has now changed from just a simple white to this particular video and that's because in my chaser I have selected input as layer 1 I could select layer 2 or I could go to any other layer so let's try and make another sequence okay and I want to go now in sequence 2 and in sequence 2 let's uh, create and also let's stop this for a second okay And also, let's create a three quickly. Now we have all 16 steps done and very weird animations but this is again just an example so uh, since this is done I'm gonna minimize it I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna press reload that's what you have to do just remember to press reload so make sure that the sequences and the steps that you have made come back I'm gonna push this all the way back and now within the sequence option you will see I have one two and three right there all right so uh, yeah just to give you uh, the example two I'm gonna play this and again I'm going to play this in timeline mode so as you can see I was able to on the go edit the animation the sequence and just update it and try and this is what this is what good software does it allows you to spend more time being creative than trying to struggle with the software or, or doing it now I want to talk about two more ways you can use this software one of them is with LED lights 
Now I'm not gonna right now use the LED light and show it to you, so sorry about that. Maybe uh, one of the videos that I'm gonna make in the future could be with LED lights and DMX with Razor Marina, right? If you like that, let me know in the comments and I will go ahead and make that. So, and the last way to use this is not using an internal plugin at all, but actually using it just um, as a software externally. How to do that is if you saw my last video uh, using XSplit, what I did there was I was able to simply capture the software and use it by bringing it in via Spout or XSplit. Uh, right, so I have my XSplit broadcaster right here. I also have my default chaser exe already selected, which is right here. So it picks it up. It's outputting uh, at 1920 by 1200. That's the resolution I've set it at. Uh, now remember, guys, if I minimize this, it will not see it. So you have to have chaser actually open. Uh, you, if you have a second screen, you can push it away, which I'm gonna do, or you can even just leave it there. And as soon as you click Resolume, it's gonna hide behind. The only difficulty with that is that uh, if I if I have my mouse uh, somewhere around that screen area, it's gonna start showing. Um, so for me, I'm just gonna push it aside. Uh, and now there's no more mouse. Uh, I would suggest making the chaser as big as possible in uh, your source, I mean in your output area, in your viewable output area. You can minimize the XSplit broadcaster, so that's fine. Um, now in this section I am going to look for sources, XSplit broadcaster, I'm gonna throw it right here. Boom, as you can see my composition now has my XSplit now if I go to output and advance you can see that it's it looks weird it doesn't fit it doesn't match so you do have to make another um, sort of adjustment not another I mean if you're just working in this way then you will only make one uh, for this particular use and I already have done it so I'm just gonna go to XSplit Chaser, I've already saved this. Now as you can see all my inputs now are already on the um, the area that it needs to cover. So as if I click on this, go to mask, you can see that this mask is exactly on uh, the XSplits, uh, I mean sorry, the Chaser's mask, right? Um, so I'm just going to drag my Chaser back in, uh, okay, and well, the advanced screen setup takes everything, right? So I'm just gonna play it here, and and then you can see here that it starts working, right? And now you can see even even in the output that it's now showing up the colors. So no need if if you don't want to work with the plugin, if you don't want to you know change the settings, or if if you if you you know not able to do it, as simple as that. Um, you can just overlay the software inside using a screen capture and use it in this manner. Um, now one of the things that you can also do I'm gonna save and close this. Another thing you can do is you can come to effects and in effects you can use something called a threshold. There it is. A threshold. And the threshold now makes it black and white so where it's blue it doesn't register because the threshold of that color is not enough and I can only see white now that becomes even cooler and especially if you're using it with LED stuff and even if you're not it just give, gives it a better effect you can also do this uh, I mean internally with the plugin you can all you can always change colors and you can always set media to work in this way but I'm showing you if you are not using it with the internal plugin if you're using externally you can you don't need to go with the yellow and the orange I mean the orange and the blue colors you can just you know change the color and you can play with it in a completely different way 
so that's it guys that was about uh, I know the video was a bit long uh, but this was about a uh, chaser and how you can use it I'm gonna put the link for the software in the description if you want to go check out so thank you so much for watching this my name is action from action studio I hope you like this I'm gonna make more videos so stay tuned and leave comments and let me know what you need and what you want and uh, what kind of projects or what kind of videos do you want me to make and I shall work on them thank you so much take care and have fun